So you finally took the time to sit down and watch our Choose Your Path series to decide which niche market you were more interested in in Pokemon. Well, today you chose to go with Pokemon investing, and today we're going to go ahead and take a look at some simplified ways to get started in that market. So I have done a little bit of research trying to get this down and really think about this and get it down to like three actual tactics or suggestions that I would put in anybody that joins Pokemon investing. When you're a Pokemon investor beginner, you definitely need to really do some very critical things when you first get out there. And I mean, if you got a lot of money, this video is not going to pertain to you. You could throw a lot of money at a lot of different areas. And of course, you could be successful. It's just going to be a given just because of the fact that you can just douse money everywhere. But if you're coming into this like a majority of people where you've got a set budget, a set amount of income you're able to put into this hobby, and you're really trying to decide how to do this, I have broken this down into what I believe are three crucial parts that you're going to want to do right when you start out and it may take a little bit of time guys if you miss what you think are opportunities there are plenty of opportunities in this market if you don't invest today and you miss something there'll be another thing tomorrow so nothing that you're doing in this hobby is really time sensitive or critical yes you might miss the big one of this month but there will always be a big one next month next week two years a year there's always the next big one coming so don't let that get underneath your skin and become the focal point of why you're investing and that you're trying to rush to get things done. It's just not worth it in the end. So today we're going to go over three different areas that I feel are very important for a Pokemon investor beginner to really get their feet on the ground and become really good at what they do and have the best chances at success in this hobby. And success is what we are really looking for at the end of the day. So first thing that I'm going to put up on the list here is going to be research. Now, research can go a multitude of different ways. You could sit here and go and just sit there on the computer, tapping on Google and YouTube and just research Pokemon investing. There's a ton of opportunities on the internet and YouTube of different characters, people, creators and stuff explaining all the different paths and ways that they've been, been successful in investing. But when it comes down to it, you need to really research down into what suits you and what do you like the best? Because my biggest suggestion is to anybody is, is that do the best. Pick the best thing that you enjoy the most. So if you enjoy graded cards like what's behind me or singles or sealed product, which is up here, then you should really, really niche down into those areas. And you can get very specific on your niche or you can be a little bit more vague when it comes down to graded cards. You know, some people go even as niche as going into graded worlds cards or they go into graded promos or graded, you know, tops cards. They have to have PSA 10s or CGC 10s. They got to have these very particular cards in order to be successful in their opinion. But you don't need to even get down that specific. When I say research, I would say get down to something you enjoy. If you love seeing slabs around your place, go buy slabs. Get into the slab market, enjoy the slab investing, and, and really do the research on that. You could sit here and try and do every aspect of the Pokemon investing. You can do a full ground blanket cover. But when it comes down to it, the amount of time, money, and effort that goes into doing them raw, them big blankets of areas, trying to cover all the different spectrums, becomes very difficult, especially if you're on a fixed budget. If you're on an unlimited budget, of course, you could put money on all of it and you really don't care. But a majority of the people that are probably watching this channel or that are joining in and looking for this research information are definitely people that are new, probably on a fixed budget, and it's probably not a very big budget. It's probably a pretty constrained budget at the end of the day so today that's one of the things that i wanted to bring up is do research niche down first find an area that you really really think that you're going to enjoy if you like seeing slabs if you like seeing sealed product if you like having singles around inside of binders then go those directions and then really instead of going widespread routes go deep roots guys go deep on your research start to really get into the fine details of that particular item because the sooner that you can really get those deep roots driven in and really start to research these subjects it really gives you the best opportunities to understand what people enjoy what people are looking for what the overall market is going to be and how you can succeed at maybe finding that one missed spot in the in the whole hobby that someone that it's missing someone's looking for that particular item 
and you could be the person to fill in and be that person to fill that missing or that void inside of the hobby or be one of the first ones to do so of course it's chances are if you're finding it there might be multitude of people finding it but you could get into it at the beginning edge and become very good at that and have that specific investment expertise in that area so personally i like to get deep roots instead of wide roots. And when it comes down to a business tactic or being successful in a lot of different areas in life, the more detailed and the more deep you go with your roots in a specific area, the stronger you're gonna be overall than having just all surface roots all over the place. Once again, great opportunities out there when it comes down to investing and finding what is best for you is going to be the overall important thing at the end of the day to continue to keep you in it, keep you engaged, and definitely keep you doing what you love. And if you're doing what you love, you'll continue to do this hobby and continue to keep working forward and enjoying what you do. Next thing we're going to talk about is sources. Now, sources can be a multitude of things. I mean, people like to really sit there and look at sources and try and find where they're going to purchase products. So whether you're a graded slab collector or you're looking at or investor, or you're looking at becoming a sealed investor, or you're looking at becoming a singles investor. You need to start looking for sources outside of the standard ones. TCG Player, eBay are great beginner areas to get into the hobby and really get your feet in the door, really get some things moving and really start pulling stuff in that you're looking for potentially. But overall, when it comes down to an actual investment opportunity, it's really difficult to find good pricing on those sites and actually be able to be successful with those sources. Yes, you'll continue to find product in those things there. But in general, people are paying or charging a little bit extra for those products because they're trying to cover the fees that are associated with using those sites. So thus, when it comes down to it, they're not exactly the best sources when it comes to getting rock bottom pricing at the end of the day. They're going to be a sufficient uh, sufficient site to be able to get these things. You'll be able to get product at a, you know, a decent price or market value, whatever it is at that point in time, and you could actually still do really well. But that's the biggest factor you got to look at when it comes down to it is finding these sources to get your product or get your items. The sooner you can find sources outside of the big box stores, the more opportunities that you're going to find are available. Guys, go into e-forums, go into discords, go into pages like this where there's comments and people talking about these things. Even join our Discord, which is down linked down below. There's people starting to bring in with items for sale. We've got some distributor class people inside of there. We have a lot of things going on right now in that Discord that there might be some opportunities that we're working at building. But once again, people would be willing to pay, you know, not paid at 13% to sell at a little bit less price if they know that they could do it successfully. So once again, sourcing things and finding those sources for your singles, for your graded cards, and especially for sealed product is extremely important at the end of the day. And that's gonna take us into the final one that I've come up with. Final one I come up with is getting the lowest price possible. When it comes down to the current markets and when you're dealing especially with modern products in Pokemon investing, there's one very important thing that people tend to really forget is that getting that lowest price is the best opportunities you can get. And once again, that comes down to using your sources to be able to get those lower pricing. You can sit here and go to TCG Player and eBay and get product. We know you can buy that pretty much any day of the week, anytime. There's going to be Pokemon product, Pokemon sealed, singles, and graded cards all available on these sites. But when it comes down to it, you're not going to get your rock bottom pricing. You're not going to get the best buy-in points. And right now, when it comes to modern Pokemon, that's what you're doing. You're really trying to jockey to get the best price, the best step-in point, the best walk-in, and trying to do the best you can at the lowest amount you can. Because at the end of the day, every dollar that you can actually save on a product and it goes up is more money that you can put into your pocket. And at the end of the day in Pokemon investing, a lot of times those dollars make a big difference at the end of the day. Even if you sit there and look at buying a booster box. So if you buy a position in booster box, let's say you're going in for a big time person. And you go ahead and you purchase a booster box and you buy 24 of these things. And you buy them at $100, right? You're going to go in and buy them at $100, and then that booster box goes to $200. That's $2,400 that you're looking at in profit on that booster box. And I'm not including fees. I know, guys, someone's going to say it. you don't include fees. I'll, it's, just skip all the fees. We're going to go simplicity on this. You go for $2,400, but what about the person that actually got it for $98, $97, $96? At the end of the day, every booster box of those 20 booster boxes, you give them an extra 2 to $4. 
Well, yeah, that's fine. And if you only do two booster boxes, it's really not a big deal, right? It's not that crucial at that point in time. But if you start talking about doing 24, you know, 36, you start going up in multiples and higher ranges of these booster boxes, every dollar that you can get is another percentage gain. If you can get a $2 discount from $98 to $100 in the buy-in point of these, that's a 2% increase that you're getting on that box at the end of the day. If you go down another dollar, that's three. You get four. You get five. You're continually getting an extra percentage point for every dollar that you can save on some of these products. That's a big factor at the end of the day when you can be successful or where you just seem to be breaking even. And that's the biggest thing is, is that when it comes down to it, that bottom pricing, that, that very bottom price that you can get is important i know a lot of people just say buy and just buy in and keep buying in and you'll be fine yeah that works too but personally when i look at it when it comes down to someone on a very limited budget someone that's really got to be efficient at doing pokemon investing when you're first starting in pokemon investing efficiency is key you need to have efficient buys you need to have efficient point we're not not looking at a boom anytime soon there's shortages right now there's some opportunities that way but actually, when it comes down to it, a potential of a big boom that's going to throw this market up like it did in 2020 is probably far off. So don't plan on that. But look at how I can get into a certain source. Use those sources to be able to get the product. So for myself, it's an LGS. I got in with an LGS, and they work with me now because I help them out in a pinch. And a lot of times, it's just getting in on accident on some of these. Some of them, it takes work. You have to get rapport. You have to get the time to work with these people and they have to begin to trust you in order for you to be able to get the benefits of that trust. So once again, guys, those are the important things that I feel are really crucial when you're first starting in Pokemon investing. Whenever you're doing it, whenever you're coming in, this could be any time along the road. It's been the same way since I've joined in in 2019. And overall, most of this advice would last except for if we go through a crazy market like we did in 2020. But overall, if you follow these little three rules when you first start off, first of all, be sure you do your research, guys. Get deep roots into something. If you want to become a graded card investor, become very good at it. Learn graded cards. Learn what people are looking for. Learn all the aspects of these cards, and that's going to be a very valuable tool when you are beginning in Pokemon investing. Next thing is, is always try and find sources outside of the big box stores. Guys, you know, like I said, TCG Player, eBay are great sources for product in a good market or when you're jockeying for position or when we're having these reprint to release. But when it comes down to the long term, especially with graded and singles, it's not exactly the best place to buy product. There's a lot of different other different places, different areas, different sites that you can get some really good pricing on these cards and be able to make deals. People are willing to move a little bit more because they're not paying extravagant fees to sell you a product and that's the biggest factor when it comes down to it on a lot of these products ebay is 13 percent tcg players 13 percent buying through those places is a big hit when it comes down to it at the end of the day and finally and last but not least always look for that bottom dollar it takes some time be patient don't necessarily dive into everything just because you think it's going to go up we see a lot of times even in this market a reprint comes and the price comes back down older products will fluctuate up and down depending on hype and fomo and demand all of a sudden, a YouTube creator goes and opens a new booster box that hasn't been seen for a while, opens a tag team box. Tag team will spike. You'll see it with XY Evolutions. A big YouTube creator will go ahead and open up XY Evolutions. Instagram or Twitter account will, or, um, Twitter account will go ahead and open a big box of evolving or evolutions. All of a sudden, it spikes. It's a consistent thing that we see in this market is that up and down, up and down of certain products and understanding that is a very important thing and how you can get in on, on that bottom pricing. When you hear it about it and you see the prices going up, you're probably too late in most cases. You want to do your research and understand what you're looking for ahead of time so you can get ahead of it and jump on it before it makes that big spike. So once again, guys, hopefully this helps you guys on your Pokemon journey. Hopefully this helps you on your Pokemon investment as you move forward. Definitely one of these things that I want to continue to help people look and learn and become better at what they do to be successful when they jump in here. I'm seeing a lot of new people still coming into this hobby, and it's awesome to see you guys in here. So please watch the videos. Do the Choose Your Pat series if you're questioning and want to know details about specific specific niches inside of the market. We're definitely continuing to add to that series and continuing to grow to bring you guys information that's pertinent for you. So once again, guys, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. If you are new here, be sure that you hit that subscribe so you get this kind of information when it comes up. 
Also, if you did like this video and you've made it this far into the video, I hope you'll hit that like button. It's fantastic if you can do that. And last but not least, be sure that you hit check out these two videos over here. I'll put them up for you. There's going to be, of course, some information for you guys. Probably one of the Choose Your Pat series and, of course, one of the other videos that has been a top watch. So, once again, guys, thank you for joining us, and we will see you next time here on Northwoods TCG.